What's up America, Neil and Kim from Jogger Farms Academy. Thanks for watching. We've got a very exciting topic for today's video. We thought since we have a very unique perspective, you know, with Neil being in law enforcement and me being a female that carries every day and we're also firearms instructors, we have a very unique perspective on concealed carry. So we thought we got, we'd give you guys some tips today. Let's get it on. One question I get a lot is everyone wants to know, so what do you carry? How do you carry it? All those great questions. I thought I'd go over that really quickly. Uh, normally, my I love the Alien Gear Shapeshift. This is my go-to holster. I do do a lot of um, tests and things like that because I do, you know, reviews and things like this. But this is what I always go back to because I just love how it fits my body. It conforms really well. It conceals really well. Um, I wear it with my Springfield XDS 9mm. I love this gun. I shoot it well. You got to figure out what works for you. And to me, the size of it, uh, I just shoot it well and I enjoy the gun. Uh, I, on the other hand, have a Kydex holster. I got lots of Kydex holsters. Uh, one of my buddies who also has a YouTube channel, North Coast Tactical, uh, made me a holster. Uh, this particular holster holds my Glock 17. I will I've never been a fan of Glocks. I've, I've made that pretty well known. I mean, I, I like them, but they're at the bottom of my choice as far as guns go. But I carry the 17 because it's also my service pistol, so if I ever have to use it, uh, it's the department's issue, not mine, right? And they'll just issue me another one. Um, so I carry the Glock 17, and that's why. It's a double stack gun. Now, can you, can you grab your gun real quick for me? So Kim chooses, and as you can see, Kim's body type, much different than mine, good for me, uh, is... Uh, a little bit more prohibited than my six foot plus frame, 200 pound frame. So I can get away with carrying a larger gun. I mean, I use the orange one, so it's really easy to see. Pretty big difference there, right? Uh, but Kim can carry this one very well concealed, where I can get away with this one concealed. Mm -hmm. Again, body types. So now let's get into some little tips that Neil and I have found through our years of carrying. All tips. That's yeah. what this video is all about. Tips right. and more tips. So most important, what's the biggest tip? If you could think of the most important thing, what is it? That's easy. It comes down to one word. Training. People spend so much money, it's mind-boggling, on modifying their guns and then the latest triggers and widgets. And we review all this stuff, but I tell you right off the bat, that's not going to make you a better shooter. What makes you a better shooter? The fundamentals of shooting and getting competent instruction from an, an instructor to whatever level that you are at. And that also means that uh, if you just picked up a gun, signing up for Billy Bob's tactical class, that's a bad idea. You need to understand the fundamentals of shooting. There is no magic shooting technique and SWAT teams or anything else. We shoot the fundamentals, period. Now what changes is the environment and moving, in the, moving with the gun and working as a team and all that, but that really has nothing to do with actually doing the job of shooting. That's always the fundamentals. So, most important thing that you can get is not Gucci guns or Gucci gear, training. All right, rant over. What else? <laughs> Another important thing is making sure that you carry every day and you carry consistently. So, don't, you know, one How day... How often do you wear your seatbelt, ladies yeah. and gentlemen? How often do you have car insurance? How often do you have airbags? And if you don't do it every day, you're not going to be comfortable. You're totally. going to be like pulling on your shirt or worried about it. The more you do it, the more comfortable it becomes. It's like wearing a watch. You don't even, I mean, you know it's there, but you're you're not thinking about it all the time. Absolutely. And also carrying, like I said, the same position all the time. So don't say, well, today I'm going to put it in my purse. Today I'm going to put it on my bra. You know, the next day it's appendix. The next day it's 430. You can't do that. You need to carry consistently. I hate day. carrying it in my bra. I'm just being honest. <laughs> now, we do talk about gear. What do we need? What's the essentials? Essentials would be a good gun belt. That's Wait a minute, really not a really awesome holster? No. Gun what? Because <laughs> if you have a crappy belt, your holster's not gonna work properly. Exactly, so you guys can understand something. If I have this uh, super awesome sub 1000 AA holster that's uh, $800, obviously I'm exaggerating. But if we have this holster and it's attached to some flimsy, crappy belt that I bought at Walmart, right, or the store, it's not going to matter because this is attached to something. It's attached to basically the foundation mm -hmm. of your carry system. You like that? I like that. All right. <laughs> so if you have a weak foundation, house is coming down. So it doesn't matter. So that's why I'm saying the belt is critically important. That's right. Right? You can get away with a... Uh, 
marginal, yeah. marginal uh, holster with a really good belt, but you can't go the other way around. You can't get away with a marginal belt and a really good holster. And you're also going to need a holster, obviously, and we're not going to dive into all the details. Wait a minute, do I need one of those Camel ones, like with the cool patterns on there and the skulls on it? <laughs> no, but you do need a decent one, and it needs to have a nice trigger guard on it. That's Think about important. this. I always find this funny. Why do you guys spend so much money, literally, on patterned super Tidex holsters that are inside the waistband? Concealed holsters. I don't get it. <laughs> like, I'm buying this to hide it, so let's make artwork on it. Uh, anyway, rant over. What else we got? <laughs> and an optional thing is having a, a spare mag. Especially if you carry a single stack, it's always a good idea to have one. You know, if you can put it in your waistband, great. But even if you just have it in your pocket or your purse, it's a great idea to have an extra mag. This is actually mine for the shield. Uh, on the occasions where I'm, I really want to be deep concealed for whatever reason, and I'm going to carry this gun, if my rule of thumb mm -hmm. for me if I carry single stack, I always have a spare magazine. This gun holds whatever, six, seven rounds. And again, we a couple things from real life experience. Uh, the movies where you shoot one time, you always hit the target, the person's always down, and you know the guy shoots 10 times and stops 10 people. Totally ridiculous, number one. Number two, when you clear malfunctions for real in real life, you may lose three, four rounds, especially in a double feed. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need some training. It will happen. And if I only have seven whatever, eight in the gun, I could be half down in my ammo and I haven't even fired a shot yet. Um, so that spare magazine is critically important with a, a gun that has limited capacity. So what about tips on where to carry on your body? On your body. <laughs> uh, all joking aside, there's going to be two main positions that the vast majority of carriers are going to have, which is appendix right up front and then four o'clock where I choose to carry. Because I carry a larger gun, uh, I prefer that. If I were to try to sit down with a gun like this, uh, very uncomfortable for me. Does that mean that because I don't like appendix carry, that's bad? No, it's just not. This is my opinion, okay, what I prefer. But one of those two will work. And even as a woman, I don't enjoy appendix because I just feel like I have like a gun baby and it's hard for me with my wardrobe and, and my lifestyle. I don't find it comfortable and I'm not even a guy. I, just, I feel like I'm always like pregnant with this weird gun child and I, it's harder for me to conceal. Well, there you go. What do we not like? We don't like off-body. Because remember that carry, going and getting training to carry a gun on your person means you should probably carry the gun on your person, on your person right? Mm -hmm. um, so off-body carry, it's, it's a, we have videos on that. You can watch them. It's stupid. You're, you're never going to ever have access to a gun. And a gun is not a magical force field that keeps bad people away. So if you don't have the gun on you, you can't get to it. Forget about it. Um, on your body, though, the one thing I will tell you to be wary of that I've never been a fan of is pocket carry, uh, where you're actually carrying your gun in your pocket. It's, it's, again, realistically, I'm not talking about how you think things in your head and what you can do in your basement. I'm talking about real life encounters where people are close. Getting that gun uh, is, is extremely unlikely. So just leave it at that. And also the small of the back. Some people make that mistake because it's really comfortable. And when I mean small of the back, that's where your spine right is. Where your spine is, yeah. And yeah, it's really easy to carry. And it's it seems very comfortable. But one slip and fall, one push to the ground, yeah. and some bad things could happen. So and I will tell you, uh, from a law enforcement perspective, from a law enforcement perspective, a lot of uh, agencies will not allow officers to have any type of backup gun uh, in that area because, again, there's been plenty of cases where people have been seriously injured. Uh, especially here it gets cold. We live in the Midwest. There's ice and stuff. You could simply just be walking to your car, slip and fall, and that piece of steel is right in your spine. Not a, not a good idea. So I'm not a fan of that one. We talked about it a little bit uh, earlier about carrying off body, and that's carrying in a purse or a bag or something like that. And we have a, a really popular video where we show the myth of trying to get it out is just ridiculous. And everyone comes back and says, well, I walk around with my hand in there when I'm in a bad neighborhood. And and I'm just going to shoot through there. And that's just ridiculous because, come on, people, we're not robots, super ninjas who uh, know when something's going to happen. The likelihood of something happening is probably when you're having a bad day, your kid's sick, your dog's sick, yeah, whatever. Something you had a fight with your boyfriend and you're not on it. You're not thinking right. You're not thinking clearly. And so now, you know, you're, you're relying on the fact that if something bad happens to you, it's going to be in a bad neighborhood when you're ready for it to come. 
And so I like the odds to be in my favor and I like to be able to access my gun quickly and not just when I'm expecting something to happen. And Kim hit a hot point right there, especially for me, because I work in the worst of worst neighborhoods mm -hmm. for a living. That's what I do. I'm a police officer in a very, 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 very area. Uh, and here's a tip. There's no such thing as a bad area. I mean, you can encounter people who have bad intentions anywhere. So the whole, the whole philosophy of, well, I'm going to be at a higher alert because I'm in this particular area is nonsense. One of the things, unfortunately, that we encounter all the time are people with mental disabilities um, that, for whatever reason, are either never treated or, or have to be relied upon them taking their own medications and things, unfortunately, happen. When they're on them, they're very functional, great people, but when they're off them, they are very bad people. Mm -hmm. And that's just a fact of life, and we can't determine where these people go and what they do. Uh, outside of the straight criminal element, which you can run into anywhere. So be aware of that. Just because you're in an area with low crime doesn't mean you're safe. So Kim, what did I say was the most important tip of all? You said training. All right. And then we talked a little bit, uh, or I mentioned a little bit about fundamentals and all that. But truly, when it comes to training, and you'll find this on many, many companies that offer defensive type training. Uh, when you look at our logo, for example, Jogger Farms Academy, you'll see some words at the bottom. The very first word is mindset mindset because that is without a doubt the most important things that we can teach any person at any level okay uh, being aware of your surroundings and understanding uh, pre-planning things having uh, for example if things go wrong where are my escapes uh, understanding people human behavior what looks out of place uh, being more prepared than the next person around you is already going to put you in a more a uh, prepared position in case something comes up. So mindset by far in the segment of training is number one. So Especially because a lot of people who can seal carry, sometimes you get in this mindset where it's like garlic and it's going to keep the bad guys I away. haven't done. No bad guys are going to touch me. <laughs> and so, you know, you'll go and be buried in your phone, not paying attention to what's going on. That is the most important thing. Mindset, mindset, mindset. Yes, yes, yes. And we teach that a lot. We got lots of videos on that. So just know that's the most important. You can check them out whenever you want. So let's move on to... Uh, to a law enforcement perspective question because we get lots and lots of those. Uh, everything we talked about, we have several videos on and stuff like that. If you guys have interest, put comments down. We'll, we'll hit them up. Especially, by the way, if you're one of our Patreons because guaranteed if you hit something on this video that you want, we will definitely we make a video on it or send you information or something. So looking at it from a law enforcement perspective, what kind of tips can you give people as far as how you, how you encounter people with concealed carry and what they can do? Yeah, so first of all, you need to know your rights. The, the Fourth Amendment in particular, uh, search and seizure. Um, you know, people, I think that if, if we had, if, if both sides of the, of the story here, if, if the people that we encounter and ourselves, if the people that we encountered had a better understanding of what your rights are, um, there would be less uh, animosity, perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, or, or people being feeling that they've been taken advantage of. Uh, so understanding search and seizure, understanding when an officer can uh, go into your belongings or when we can we can ask you certain things is important. So just kind of as a general idea, you have to understand something. I forget being law enforcement. A person can ask anybody any question. I can say, do you have a gun on you? I may have never met this person in my life. I might be in any state at any time of the day. And she has the right to say whatever she wants. In other well. words, <laughs> yes, no. Or what do you say? Screw well. off. Okay. Even as a police officer, I know because I have a uniform on and I'm official and I'm asking the question, you may feel obligated to answer that, but realistically, without being called to any type of crime or anything, we're just in a store and I see a bulge on you and say, hey, do you have a gun on you? You can answer the same, and there's nothing more that I can do about it. Uh, now, if you volunteer the information, that's on you. For example, uh, a lot of times when we stop people in traffic stops, one of the questions are, can I search your car? Okay. Well, you can't then say, sure, and then be upset with the police for searching your car and finding your drugs, right? Because you gave them consent. We get in this argument quite a bit on the streets. Uh, oh, yeah, whatever, you can search. Uh, well, well, that's not my crack pipe. Uh, those are <laughs> even my pants, right? It happens all the time. Uh, so if you don't want to give us consent, then say no, all right? Until we have other reasons, a police dog or smell of drugs or something like that. We can't really do anything. That's why we're asking the question. Remember that. Along those lines, you also, besides for knowing your rights, you also need to know the laws and the, and the rules of your state. Good save. So, uh, I can't get into this because I don't know where you live. I can only talk from the state of Ohio, but there's generally guidelines along the way. 
For example, in the state of Ohio, you're required, if you get a CCHL, is what we call it, concealed handgun license, uniformly, CCW is the word used, you have to inform law enforcement when you're stopped or you're being detained. Okay? Real simple. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a firearm. Whatever the case is, I have my CCW. Got videos on that. You can watch those. But that is your obligation. So if you fail to do what you're supposed to as a, as a responsibly armed citizen, that is on you, not on us. So if you get in trouble for carrying a gun, even though you did it appropriately, but you didn't follow the steps, that's that's an educational problem. It's a training issue on your end. Okay? So really, really important. Also, if you live in a state that doesn't require that, I, in my opinion, what is the big deal? First of all, as a police officer, I don't care whether you carry or not. What I do care about is that you you are not proposing any threat to me. You're being open and honest with me. And I feel good about it because at the end of the day, I want to go home. Mm -hmm. And so do you, right? So let's say you're in a state that doesn't require you to say that. And you said, hey, officer, I'm carrying a firearm on me. just want to be up front with you. Great. I feel way better. Way less likely of any type of uh, bad bad juju going on moving forward for that, whatever the stop was, okay? Uh, so understand what you need to do from your end of responsibilities. Another thing we get questions on a lot is traveling. Like people want write to us and say, what are the laws for Ohio? No matter where you're traveling, if you're going to be taking your gun, make sure you go to the Attorney General website. Only that website. Don't go to Google and look up what it says there. For each state that you're going to travel and print out the rules and the laws of, of that state so that you go into it knowing, you know, maybe your state, you don't have to admit when you have a firearm or not. In sure. another state, you do. So make sure you know, can you go in a school zone? Some states you can drink, some states you can't. So, no. And I fall in this trap a lot. People ask, like, don't ask your brother, mother, sister, your neighbor who's a cop. If, mm -hmm. uh, For example, I've obviously people come to me, it's what I do for a living. But I'm telling you straight right now, if you... If you ask me what are the laws in Pennsylvania, which I know pretty well, I'm going to say, well, here's what I know, but make sure you research that on your own. Don't take someone's word for it because it's not going to do you any good if you get pulled over in Pennsylvania and say, well, Neil told me. Well, it doesn't really <laughs> matter, okay? Or you're going to Florida or whatever the case is, wherever you're going to, wherever you carry, don't listen to somebody, you know, no matter how much experience they are, go to the actual legal resources of that particular state. Really, really key. Well, here, let, let's another topic is uh, <clears throat> planning your day. You want to talk about that? Yeah, that's really important. That's from both perspectives. But think about what you're going to do that day. Are you going to go somewhere where you can't carry? Maybe, you know, you have some errands to do. Where are you going to put your gun? Is it going to be locked up safe? Things like that that um, people don't think about. You know, mm -hmm. you really need to look through. You know, it doesn't take a lot of time. And once you get used to it and something, like I said, carrying every day, it becomes part of your lifestyle. You you already have plans and you know what you're going to do. So one thing, uh, we'll put a link down, put that link, link, legal video link on there. Uh, Ian Friedman, a very good friend, one of the top uh, attorneys in the country. Now, it's specifically an Ohio video, but it applies to a lot of different areas. Uh, we ask him a lot of legal questions and whatnot. And so we joke about the $40,000 wave. And then it means that the person took the gun out and brandished it in some way, whether it's in a car or whatever the case is. Uh, just boil this all down, make it simple. Especially if you're there and you have a CCW, CHL, you're there to protect your life with that gun. So the only reason you're going to take that out is because you're going to use it or you're going to die. You're going to receive seriously bodily harm or death. That's right. And regardless of what happens, you're in for a long, long legal battle regardless. So just that's a, it's a life or death only situation. Let's also talk about respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, with law enforcement. I can tell you this. And for all my, my, uh, Guys and gals in law enforcement out there, you're going to probably chuckle at this one. But I cannot tell you how many times an individual who was a passenger in a car got themselves or the driver in a whole lot more trouble than was ever necessary because they have to run their trap. And they're disrespectful to police. Remember, it's a job to me. I don't really care. Uh, I can tell you story after story after story. Anybody who's been in law enforcement for more than a couple hours can do the same because this happens all the time. We are there to do a job, and if you are respectful for us and you treat us fairly, we will do the same to you. Most of the time, especially other people in the vehicle, just a little side note, uh, generally we're not even going to talk to those, per those people unless we have a reason to in most cases. Uh, but I can tell you for, for sure, many, many times when people get pulled out of a car, detained, uh, get disorderly conduct or arrested because of the way they act. So just treat us with respect. We'll treat you with respect. Uh, there's always a bad apple in every every job there ever is. We can't use that as a total blanket, though. 99% of everybody, we put our lives on the line for you guys and for people around you. So uh, I can believe me when I tell you, a little bit of respect goes a long way on any type of encounter with law enforcement.
And also, it's not like they don't have a boss and you can't complain just like if you were unhappy with your McDonald's. Yeah, people think like we're above the law. Like, (laughs) Like, no, no, it's not how it works. In fact, most of the time, uh, our jobs are actually negatively impacted by how many, seriously, by how much regulations and policies and concern for complaints that we have. Really and truly. All right, guys, I hope you got a lot on this video. This was uh, some really good tips. Hopefully, if you want more specific stuff, let us know. If you guys like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Like it, share it, comment. We always appreciate getting um, stuff from you like that. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and also click that little bell so you get notified every time. What the deals with that bell? Like, it used to be, a, like, you used to automatically be in it, but now you yeah. got to... Maybe if you don't click the bell, you won't ever know when we put videos out. So totally make sure ridiculous. you click it so you can see our videos. I'm not bitter about it. <laughs> you can find us on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, and we put all of our premium content on Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, just so you guys know, if you want to have any direct contact with Kim and I, that is the best route. We always respond back. We also do Skype yeah, you and can Zoom. Skype us, you Zoom can. Us. Yep. Uh, so we'll, we do uh, kind of over the distance training things in that one. We do uh, vlogs that we only put on Patreon and also we take video requests too, which is really cool. Yeah, well, pretty much all our Patreon videos come from Patreon requests and we will always answer your question. I do the best I can on YouTube, but that's almost impossible now. But for Patreon, for sure, if you have a question, it's right. That's right. Whether you send it direct or put it out there, always there. So anyway, oh, and we do giveaways. Oh yeah. Yeah, every, almost every month. Uh, last month we gave away an Olight. It was really cool. It's a limited edition Gucci color. So, very cool. <laughs> All right, guys. Until next time, remember, remember it's, it's better always better to be judged, judged by 12, 12 than carried by 6. By six.